Hi folks, welcome back to Space Haven. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Space Haven Alpha, Ver Alpha 13 changes that were recently released. Um, this video is a little bit late. It's, uh, you know, this is an October 12 release and it's now Halloween, I think. So, um, sorry about that. But um, I wanted to have a complete playthrough of the game before I felt confident talking about the changes. Um, so... Um, I just finished the playthrough on Twitch, so check that out on my video on demand. Um, link will be in the description. Let's get started. Um, so I'm going to load up a game that I have just about finished here, and we're going to talk about uh, what we have available to us. Um, so this is this is the very end of the game that I'm in here. So we're kind of kind of just going to quickly go over everything that's different. Uh, the biggest thing in Alpha 13 is the new research tree. Um, so there's the research is now broken up into categories. So the the you know the way that the research progresses is different. Um, each each research item has some basic amount of time. I think you start with the research lab technology always because otherwise you can't do any research, right? Um, but uh, each research has the normal research that you need to do using the research lab facility. Um, and then there's also experiments that you have to do using the new building called the workbench. Um, so uh, the workbench, like you take individual resources from your ship stores and then um, one of your crew members will sit there on the lab bench and pull them apart and try to figure out how they work. Um, and once they've done a certain number of those experiments and that satisfies that part of the research. Um, so uh, you want to get that going as early as possible because you can't do a lot of important upgrades without it. Um, before you do that, you have to actually research the workbench. Uh, I'm going to start a new game. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that today or if I'm going to get to it in a separate video. Um, but uh, I do want to I do want to start a new um, brutal difficulty playthrough so I can show you kind of the research tree from start to finish. But I wanted to give you a quick overview first of everything. So um, so we have the research tree. These are ship systems. We have navigation, weapons, shields, um, and the targeting jammer. Power, we have the generator tree. Um, so there's no longer like a generic research speed up you have to get to the later generators. You just have to drill straight through the tree here. And the first thing on the tree is power capacity node, which is interesting. So you always have that available, whether you're going the generator path or whether you're going solar panels. <clears throat> the next thing is robotics. Um, there's two new things that you can build in the robots section of the menu. The robot storage is for uh, when, it, when a robot gets destroyed and now creates a special type of corpse called a broken robot. Um, and robot storage lets you collect broken robots and store them um, in one place. Um, and then the robot workbench lets you basically recycle broken robots or broken... Um, they can These can be corpses of an members of the android faction, or they can be robots, logistics bots, or salvage bots, um, and they can be recycled using this facility after they're destroyed. Um, so this this gives you a listing of the resources that each one produces when it's recycled. Um, industry um, is a little bit con condensed, so you have kind of more top-level options now. You can either go directly to chemicals or you can go metal. Um, you don't have to kind of step through you know, multiple tiers as much. So these are these are kind of like producing raw materials, these industry, the first tier of industry here. And then the second tier of industry um, lets you produce the advanced stuff, the assembler, the electronics fabricator, and then the advanced assembler. Um, so all the, all the things that these facilities produce are the same. They've just changed the order that the research is done. Item fabricator is now a top level research. Actually, I think it was already a top level research item. Um, and then the enslavement facility keys off of that. Um, there are these new data sheets that give you the official game stats on the two types of aliens, the crawlers and the haulers. Um, we actually have done the research here, so I'm just going to quickly show you what they are. Um, so, spoiler. Um, so this is the crawler. It has 30 health and 1 to 6 bite damage. Um, and this is the hauler. Um, it has 120 health and 6 to 24 uh, hauler slash damage. Um, and this is just giving you kind of a description of the creature and how it works, what it does. Um, and there, these really haven't changed since the previous version of the game. They've just written out what it is now and what these things do. Um, so you can spend time researching this on you want, if you want to. 
Um, I wouldn't say it's essential. Uh, medical is now a top level research item, which is really nice. Um, so if you have an injured crew member, um, you could potentially rush, 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 rush the research. Sorry. Um, hyper sleep chambers are now also implemented in the game. Um, that's actually pretty important. Um, the way that, um, in the previous versions of the game, you could just go from one solar system to another without really worrying about it. The hypersleep chamber didn't really do anything. Um, in this version of the game, your um, crew members actually get a huge debuff if uh, if they're not able to sleep in a hypersleep chamber. Um, each hypersleep chamber um, holds one crew member for one, uh, you know, for an interstellar jump, um, and every every interstellar jump uses a half of an energy rod per crew member. So that really that's a really important uh, change because that changes kind of the whole dynamic of the game, especially the early game. Um, it's really important to get this re research done before you move to the second sector um, because the, if you're, at least if you're playing on brutal difficulty like I did on, on my first couple of playthroughs here, um, or first couple attempts, I should say, my first successful playthrough, um, the um interstellar hyperspace sickness is really debilitating it's like a minus 40 or minus 50 penalty to all of your things it knocks your crew mentor crew members unconscious for hours after they come out of hyperspace um and it basically makes them like it actually takes away half of their hit points it makes them miserable um and it puts them in really bad shape um so you don't want to do that to your crew members you want to make sure that you get one of these built for each crew member that you have as soon as you can um we also have the entertainment stuff this is pretty much the same as it was um and then botany um we now have the autopsy table in the botany tree at the top level instead of in the medical tree um and we now can produce fibers at the top level um interestingly you don't get the co2 producer and water collector until the second stage of botany so the first stage of botany is the grow beds Second stage of botany is the CO2 producer and the water collector, and then the composter. And then the third stage is advanced nutrition, which is the growth rate bonus and the artificial meat. Um, so that's the research tree. None of the actual, most, or actually most of the actual things in the game haven't changed. Um, it's just the order in which you do the research uh, is really different. Um, and that has a pretty substantial impact on the game. So like I said, the couple things that did change were the cryo sleep chamber is now really important. Um, and there's now a research workbench that you have to build in addition to the research facility in order to get a lot of these projects done. Um, okay, let's talk about other changes in the game. Um, I am going to look for a crew member here who is injured. Let's see. Um, so you can you can see one example here, though he's almost completely healed. Um, there are now different injury statuses in Alpha 13. So Axel here is recovering from a holler slash. Sorry, Axel. Um, there's now specific debuffs depending on which type of alien hits you. Um, there's accidents that can be caused by industry um, that can create smoke without actually starting a fire on board, and they might cause um, an injury like burning the hands of your crew member or causing vision loss, things like that. Um, the lab bench can also create accidents, um, which can also injure your crew members. Um, and this is... we don't have a land bench on the ship anymore because I've actually done all the research in this playthrough. So we'll see that when we go through uh, the new game on Brutal Difficulty. Um, let me see if we have any other injuries here in my, in, in my current... We don't have a lot of industry going on right now, so... Um, we don't see any in injuries right away. Um, another critical thing, uh, boarding combat is radically different. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So, we're going to go ahead and declare war. We're going to call these guys the MAV Full of Tacos, the Military Alliance Prison Station, and we're going to declare war on them. Um, I don't need to have all my turrets activated for that, um, but I do want to activate... I do want to activate ops on board the Eudokia. We're going to call them and get a formal declaration of why of war and I want to show you that I'll show you why in just a minute here uh, let's make sure we have shuttles available for our away teams
Hey, Zuma, how's it going? Hey, Relax House. It hurts. Does it hurt? Oh, yeah, boarding actions hurt. <laughs> For sure. Um, let me actually make sure... I don't think the chat is actually visual visible on my um, recording. Let me fix that real quick. Give me one second, guys. Um, chat widget. Okay, my chat widget is not working. We're going to try adding a window capture... Or um, close chat. All right, so give me one second here. I apologize for that. Okay, so that should be translucent theoretically. It might be a little bit. Anyway, I can see what my people on Twitch are saying, so that I can actually um, make some kind of vague sense when I'm talking to them. Um, all right. Uh, any news of Bryce in the patch notes? No, there's not. Um, so Bryce was a member of our crew who got kidnapped in this current uh, playthrough of our game here. Um, he was kidnapped by cultists and taken away, and we never found him again. Um, all right, so we are going to declare war on these guys so that I can show you the new boarding combat mechanics. Yeah, maybe next patch. <laughs> Could be. All right, so... Um, let's go ahead and get our shuttle, our away teams underway here. We have three away teams in this current fleet. Um, two on board the Small Hope, which is our big ship over here. Somewhat ironically named at this point. Um, now this is a prison break. It's going to be tough. Let's take a look. And this is, you know, uh, the game's already saved. This is just a throwaway, so, you know, if we die, it's not that big a deal. Um, we have two airlocks here, so we can actually enter from... That's my own ship. I I cannot enter my own ship from... I mean, I can enter my own ship from two airlocks, but that doesn't really help me. Um, okay, and then we're missing one shuttle. There we go. Okay, let's see what the situation... Uh, this is my first time raiding a prison station since the update, so we'll see what happens. Um, we have ops. This place has a targeting jammer, so we're not going to be able to target them with our weapons. Let's go ahead and scan. Okay, so this is what's new here. You can see that there are now cover objects. These are in the furniture menu, um, and I think they cost like half an infra block to build. Let's check that, actually. Um... Yeah, sorry, these cost one in from lock and 20 tools to build. Um, these now provide cover for the crew, for um, your crew members in, um, you know, face to face combat. Um, so that's pretty significant because it really changes the. Yeah, you can kneel behind cover um, by right clicking on your guys and using the kneel action, um, as these guys are doing here. Um, are they new? The cover objects are new in Alpha 13, yes. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try to breach here, but these guys have this facility pretty well defended. Um, so we can see here that there's aside from the little cosmetic stuff like the lights, there's a couple changes that we're seeing immediately here. The first change is the cover objects, but the second change is that these guys are already there waiting for us, ready to ambush us when we come in through the airlock. So they actually. Yeah, they actually changed the uh, AI and they made them, you know, they created every boarding action is now like walking into a kill box. It's super dangerous um, and you can easily lose multiple crew members as I have already done on this playthrough and will continue to do as you can see here. So um, we can try to get to cover, um, but the probably, uh, you know, it's it, I'm not really clear at this point what's the best strategy for actually defeating this cover. It's a pretty tough situation. Um, one thing that really helps is destroying an enemy ship before boarding it. We obviously couldn't do that in this case, but uh, when you can do that... Uh, Dante doesn't have a gun for some reason. Um, so, anyway, here's the control to Neil. You can say we've already got surrenders from, like, half of our guys here. Um...
So we haven't even finished exploring the entire station. This is just the one airlock that we've cleared. So even though we outnumbered the guys that were guarding this airlock uh, two to one, we almost lost because of these cover objects. And it's very likely that we'll lose our entire boarding team here if we continue through this. Um, especially, yeah, especially if the enemy has shotguns, uh, that's really bad for you. Um, so this is a huge, huge change in the overall kind of balance and difficulty level of the game. Um, so it's really important to be aware of that. Um, and um, one thing, something that you can do to mitigate that is if you destroy the enemy, normally, you know, in the previous version of the game, I would have recommended send your guys over and board the enemy ship directly while the enemy ship is still intact. Um, because that way you can take the guys at their bridge stations by surprise. But in this version of the game, it actually makes a lot of sense to destroy the enemy ship first, um, because that creates multiple openings. So you could come in, you know, I can't do it in this case, like I said, because there was a targeting jammer. But, you know, if I were to, you know, blow up this whole facility somehow and make a hole in the wall back here, I could then come in through here. I wouldn't have to deal with these cover objects and I wouldn't have a, a line of guys waiting for me when I came into the building here. Um, so that's, that's a big deal, and it's something that you definitely want to be aware of. Um, let's see, what else has changed? So we talked about injuries, we talked about research, um, we talked about, um, the new boarding combat mechanics. Um, we talked about hyperspace travel. I think, um, most of the other actual game mechanics haven't changed. Um, the one other thing that I want to show you guys is um, the Brutal Difficulty. Let's check that out. So we're going to start a new game here. So there's now three scenarios noticed. There's a basic platform. There's an abandoned mining station. Um, so this is the this is the kind of beginner scenario. This is the I know what I'm doing and I'm going to build my own ship from scratch scenario, which is a lot more fun once you actually know what you're doing. Um, and then there's a small hope. This is the, the super difficult, uh, brutal difficulty scenario. This is the only scenario that supports the brutal difficulty mode. Uh, we're going to start a new game here just so I can show you what it's like. And you can actually start this scenario in any difficulty, but we're going to choose brutal. Um, you can, you can edit this just like with the other game modes, um, and change individual difficulty settings here. Um... The resources that we start with are very low. I am going to increase our starting crew by one because I think having three crew members is very tedious. Um, but, you know, we can, you know, if you want to, you could start with three three crew members. Um, we only are starting with two pistols, however, so that's actually super, super difficult. Um, so we're, so we're going to be boarding alien derelicts on the hardest possible difficulty with only two crew members with pistols and one crew member who could punch stuff, or two crew members if we go up to four here. Um, we can control everything about the starting sector. We can set sandbox mode, which I think doesn't make a lot of sense in brutal difficulty. Um, and uh, we also have randomness settings. I guess this is how lucky or unlucky you are. Um, Let's see. And then the asteroid rules, everything is rare or very low, pretty much. So you're going to see a lot less resources on any given asteroid, even than in harsh difficulty. Um, aliens are very common. Um, a lot of the space hazards are more common. Um, we see a lot of micrometeoroids in particular. Um, the new setting that I particularly wanted to point out here is the interstellar travel threat. Um, so this affects how severe the debuff and the damage from interstellar travel without a cryopod is. Um, so this is set to Sirius, which is the most, the you know, the highest difficulty. Um, there's also another important new setting. I'm trying to remember what it's called here. Only play relaxed mode so far, which is a bit which is a bit boring. Okay. Um, there's also I mean, it depends on your play style. I think um, I think some people prefer relaxed mode. It's just you know they want to just build things, um, and they want to build bigger and bigger fleets, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you know if you want to challenge, you know you can obviously go for the brutal difficulty. Um, now there's also another new setting which is also really impactful to the game, especially in the harder difficulty levels called Dismantling Returns All Resources. Um, 
So normally in the previous versions of the game, when you dismantle a facility, you get back all the blocks that you use to build it. Um, but that's not true anymore in Brutal Difficulty. Um, so if this box is unchecked, um, you will only get back scrap, just like you would when you're scrapping a derelict ship. Um, that means you can't get tech blocks. Uh, in Rax mode, there's no haulers. Okay. Um, yeah, so this, this means you can't get tech blocks from a... Uh, claimable ship anymore. In fact, I don't even know if there are claimable ships in Brutal Difficulty. I've yet to see one. Um, but um, you're you're gonna, you're basically just going to get um, hull scrap, energy scrap, and infra scrap back from things things on your own ship that you dismantle. Um, so that's really important to be aware of. Uh, moving um, a thing still qualifies as having all the blocks, so you don't need to. When you move something, you don't need to uh, worry about rebuilding it. Um, you you will still be using the same resources as what you had before. So you can still make adjustments to your layout, but now you can't like build an extra research facility temporarily and rush some particular kind of research and then dismantle it and use it to build something. Use the tech blocks to build something else. So strategies like that are now out the window in Alpha 13. Um, anyway, let's jump into a brutal difficulty so we can see what the starting scenario is like. Um, so the priorities of the skills have changed a little bit in Brutal Difficulty. I would say that weapons is a lot more important. That's the big one. Um, and we have to have crew members that are all good at fighting. Um, so this guy with a 20% surrender chance and a 3 in mining is no good to us. So we're looking for mining and also weapon skill. Let's reroll Elmo here. So here's a miner who will never surrender, but he's not very accurate. This guy is mining in weapons, and he's minus 30%. He's a psychopath, though, um, which basically gives him an accident chance. That's pretty risky for a starting crew member, so I think we're going to reroll that. So we're looking for mining and weapons. You can hit random so often that you have almost all three, yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you do get a really good character roll, but I'm not that patient. Um, we're just gonna... You know, I generally expect my guys to have, like, two two skills at least out of three. Not necessarily all of them. So this guy's really good. He's got... He's a fast learner, and he's one of the new backgrounds that they introduced, by the way, game developer. Um, and he is good at mining, uh, navigation, research, and weapons. So this guy's a... Uh, sorry. Joy is a good person to have on our crew here. Um, and I think we need a botanist. Uh, let's check and make sure we have somebody else who's doing industry. Because I think I want to re-roll Ivy here. Um, only because uh, we need somebody who's good at botany. So we're looking for three in botany. And they also have to be a good fighter. So 10% surrender is not going to cut it. Um, so this is mining and botany, minus 10% sur surrender, and a spacefarer trait, which is fantastic for weapon accuracy. Um, so this is a pretty good starting crew, I would say. And we have a three in everything except for gunnery and operations, which is really good. Um, let's start the playthrough. Yeah, we even have medical. Okay, so this is our new ship called the Small Hope. Um... Everything about this scenario is terrible um, in a challenging way, and I think it's pretty fun. Um, so let's look over our ship here and see what we have. First of all, I'm going to create a command group so we can have all our guys together. Um, so we have our bridge here. We have these um, freestanding thermal regulators, which I don't like because they take up a lot of space. Um, we have a navigation console and an ops console and a research lab, so that's pretty good. Uh, we have a small crew quarters that's uncomfortable because we have a toilet directly across from the beds. Um, so this is not really ideal for our crew here. Um, we have a kitchen that currently has no food, but uh, we have a little bit of food in storage, so we'll have that solved shortly. Um, we have a little bit of furniture. Um, here in our kind of industrial section, we have a single shuttle bay. We have life support. We have a gas scrubber. or sorry, oxygen generator. Two gas scrubbers, actually and two oxygen generators. 
we have a hull stabilizer, we have a tool facility, and we have a single energium power generator and two hyperdrives. Um, so that's basically our ship's layout here. There's a number of problems with this layout. Um, so the thermal regulators. So a lot of this, a lot of this ship layout uses space very inefficiently. So that's kind of a problem in general because we're using more hyperfuel than we need to in order to travel. Um, the thermal regulators here um, are taking up space that they don't need to because they're using freestanding regulators instead of wall regulators. Um, as I said, the bedroom's uncomfortable because they have a toilet directly across from the crew quarters. Um, over here we have one single loud noisy industrial section where we're going to end up installing everything because this is the only place that we have space to put anything right now. Um, and there's one more, probably the worst thing about the ship is that we have no mining pods. So the first thing that we may want to do is build a mining pod, pod hanger. However, that costs two infra blocks, one tech block, and one hull block. And guess what? We don't have those things. Um, so we have no ability to get resources right now. We have no industry. We have no mining. All we have is research and the ability to trade the things we have. So let's look at what we can trade. Um, we could technically trade a dergium, although we really don't want to. Uh, we can't really trade Hyperium because we only have two units to begin with. Um, and our ship is probably going to be overweight here, although they're still fueling the drive. So we'll see about that in a second. We only have a little bit of water, so we're soon we're going to run out of oxygen soonish. Um, we have some hull blocks, so we have a little bit of room to play around and expand the ship if we want to. Once we have a pod on board, because right now, because you need a pod in order to build hull. Um, we have only a few infra blocks. We have a couple t uh, no tech blocks. We have a couple energy blocks, one soft block, um, one or only like one or two units of each food type. We have medical supplies. Now medical supplies we don't need right away, so if we can get away with it, uh, we should sell this and try to get um, some trade for it. Uh, we want to trade for tech blocks so we can actually start building some useful things here, um, particularly the pod hanger, because we really can't survive without the pod hanger. Um, so we're going to want to trade our medical supplies, our energy cells, um, probably not the pistols, we're going to need those, but maybe a unit of fertilizer or two, and maybe some biomatter to try to get... Um, to try to get um, some basic resources going. Um, hey, Boom Boomalope, how's it going? Yeah, we have we still have not found Bryce. This is a new playthrough, so Bryce has lost to us. Sorry about that. Um, so we're gonna have looking at our looking to see who our best fighters here are here. Um, we're gonna get uh, Joy is our best fighter for sure, so she's gonna get a pistol. And who's gonna get our other pistol? It's going to be uh, Barney, the Nyctophile. So Joy and Barney, you two are going to go to storage and get our two pistols here. Good. Okay, and there's nothing for us in the starting sector, so that's also a big problem for us. There's literally, literally nothing here. It's completely empty. So that means we want to jump as soon as possible. Um, we're waiting for the hyperdrive to get fuel, and as soon as that's done, then we'll be launching. We're also stocking up the oxygen generators and everything else here. Okay, so this should be the second... Um, fuel unit. There we go. We're now ready to jump. Um, we are underweight, so we're actually okay there. But uh, notice we're at zero Hyperium. So the only Hyperium... We're still able to jump because we have Hyperium in the drives. This is just showing what we have in storage, right? So if we look at the Hyperium hyperdrive, um, we've consumed a full crystal to power this thing. Um, and we have 0.1 crystals left in this other drive here. So... Wherever we land, it's going to have to be enough to get us some good stuff. We're going to want to try to land. We have to be judicious about every jump because we only have so many jumps here that we can do before we run out of everything, basically. This gives us two options of things to explore. We're looking for a derelict ship. 
Derelict ship is probably going to be our best bet to get early resources. All right. We're going to go ahead. Now, it's really it's super important when we go to board a derelict ship, we're going to take all four guys with us because we're going to need the help. But if we run into aliens right away, um, we have to be able to fight. And with two pistols, it's not going to be enough. So we need it. We need it. We need our other two guys to either screen for the guys with the pistols um, and kind of tank for them, or to be able to pick up the pistols when one of our shooters not gets knocked unconscious. So already we see a crawler here. We're going to be really cautious and just take our time and pick away at them. We don't want to get any injuries here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have Camden go up and open each of these doors. And we're just going to inch our way through the ship a little bit at a time here. We could go over here to try to draw him across to give our uh, buddies more opportunity to shoot. There we go. So we're just taking this slow at this point at 1x. We don't want to get any bug bites if we can help it because they're a lot more debilitating than they were in the previous version of the game. Well, I wouldn't say a lot more, but they are more debilitating. And um, another thing about the injury system in this game, it's possible to get long-term injuries if you get uh, wounded over and over again or if you get like a really major wound. Um, so those injuries require a med bed to heal. They won't go away on their own. So you might end up with a permanent penalty when you get bitten. Uh, you're always rolling the dice with that. So we're just being as patient as we can here. Slowly working our way through. As long as we don't have any haulers on board and we're not, and the aliens aren't laying any eggs, we can take our time. Nope, oh, nope. I was clicking on the corpse for a minute by accident. There we go. Tradition to send the new guy out as bait. I mean, we're all—they're all new guys technically, so I feel like you know maybe they drew straws or something. Another one bites the dust. Okay, once we're kind of confident that we've cleared a couple areas, we can start to speed things up a little bit, maybe. Um, let's go ahead and grab this. Uh, we're going to send our other explorer, Igor, to go check out this side here. And this, these 64 credits are going to we're going to get a lot of mileage out of these 64 credits in Brutal Difficulty. That's a really good early game find. Okay, we see an alien here. We're going to have Igor continue opening this door while Camden withdraws back to the vacuum area. Um, I think we're going to have Igor back off here too. Uh, let's go ahead and grab oxygen from the shuttle, because it's been a while that we've been in here. We're going to quickly grab this. We don't really care about the data log so much. But that's fine, because we want to get the bug to come. They told me it was Igor. Well, they told you wrong, didn't they? Must be really nerve-wracking when you're relying on your teammates' aim to save your life and your teammates miss a lot. I don't know what movie that's from. Okay, I think there's one more alien still on board here somewhere, at least. We actually have only explored like half the ship so far. 
Let's speed things up a little bit. I think we can afford that now. Oh boy, okay. So now we have an alien in tow. While the alien's chasing Camden. Ow, so we got bitten here. Let's see what we let's see what the damage is. Uh we got minus five crawler bite. That's not terrible. So we lucked out there. We didn't get any like serious injury. Um, in order to conserve oxygen here, we're going to finish exploring the rest of the ship while this chase scene is going on back here. Let's slow things down. And Frankenstein, Gene Wilder, Mel Brooks, etc. Oh, nice. Alright, I think that should be everything. Yes, we've explored the MAS test pseudo. So now we can undraft our guys. We can. Okay, so we get two fruit, which is really nice. We get medical supplies and we get crawler corpses. So crawler corpses can be used for research into the crawler data sheet. Um, and I believe they can also be dissected for monster meat. Um, we also have a bunch of different scrap types that we can bring aboard, but we don't have a recycler yet. Um, so we might just end up selling scrap. Let's go ahead and fast forward now that we actually have um, kind of an established income here. So um, in the very early game in Brutal Difficulty, you can get a lot of resources from derelict ships. Uh, but there's kind of a HUD, there's going to be a hard cutoff at some point where two pistols isn't enough anymore to be able to take on derelicts. So you have to be able to get kind of over the hump before that point. Um, let's also get some research started uh, before I completely forget about that. Um, so this is what we have to start off with. We have Botany 1. Um, we have... Actually, we don't even have Botany 1. We have the Navigation Console and the Research Lab, and that's it. The first thing we probably want to research is the Workbench. Um, although we could also go for power. Um, I lied. No, we can't go for... In order to get the X1 generator, we need to do energy and experiments. So in order to do that, we need a research workbench. So that's going to be our first priority above everything else. We also have a military alliance ship coming into the sector, which is really nice. If we're lucky, they'll have some tech blocks that we can trade for. Uh, tech blocks seem to be more common in the early parts of the galaxy in uh, this game mode. Igor is out of oxygen. The shuttle is out of oxygen. Here we go. Okay, we're good now. Okay, so now the Soleil Royal. We're going to see what we can trade with them. Um, this is also a new thing. There's a couple new ship designs, one for each faction um, in the game, at least. Um, and in the early game, we're going to see ships that have no weapons from every faction. And this is an example of one of those ships. So this, this Soleil Royal... Um, its only weapon is the shuttlecraft. So if you see an AI ship like this, that means they're going to come and board you probably and try to fight you um, on board instead of just shooting at you directly. Um, there's also three factions that are enemies now. We have the Slavers Guild, we have the Pirates, and we have the, um, the Cult of New Haven um, that are enemies by default in Brutal Difficulty. Um, so we're going to want to watch out for them. But for now... We're just going to trade with the Soleil here and see what we can sell. Let's try to... We're getting good prices on the energy cells. We're going to sell those. I think we're going to end up selling some hull blocks. Let's see about that in a second. Um, we can also afford to sell some medical supplies. These guys have four tech blocks, which is pretty good. Let's see how many tech blocks we need for a recycler, because I think that's kind of our first essential build here, aside from the workbench. Um, here we go. Resource. Oh, actually, now this is a tough question. Do we get the recycler first or do we get the pod first? I think we need the pod first because we can't get any resources without the pod. So let's get a pod hanger belt. That's going to cost us one tech block and two, and our only two infra blocks that we have here. That's really tough, actually. Do we, does it make sense for us to get the pod first, or does it make sense to get the recycler? The recycler, we actually can't afford it anyway, because we don't have enough infra blocks. So we would need, if we wanted to get a recycler online, we would need three tech blocks and three infra. Can we actually buy that? So this is what we would be buying. It's 936 credits. 
Can we make up that difference? We actually can't afford that technically. Um, we also might want to buy some fuel, some green crystals, but they actually don't have any for sale. Um, so we're kind of SOL there. Um, so the recycler is going to open up some options for us, though. I think if we can get that online, then we'll be in a little bit better shape than we are now. We have to be a little bit judicious with recycler use because we have a limited supply of energy and recycling takes a lot of energy. Um, airlock is blocked. Our logistics is backlogged because of all the scrap we just brought on board. That's okay. Let's check how our salvage progress is coming along. They did uh, tweak the salvaging process in this version of the game to speed it up a little bit. Um, so now it takes less time to dismantle things on board derelicts and reclaim the scrap. Which is very good because otherwise we probably wouldn't be able to survive our first couple days of travel here in brutal difficulty. Um, Another thing that I forgot to mention, a new component of the game is services. Um, in the previous version of the game, there was there were these civilian repair stations where you could go and build out your ship's hull. They've added a couple of extra services um, to the game that other faction ships provide. So the Salil Royal here has the option to provide uh, medical services to our crew. So we have a permanent crew injury that we want to get healed. We can pay an amount of money that we don't actually have right now um, in order to um, let the let our crew members spend a couple hours on board the Solil ship um, and be treated by their doctors using their medical supplies. Um, so that's now a service that we can pay for that a lot of factions will offer. Um, there's also a new research station added to the game. So if you have the money, you can pay a space station, the guys on the space station to do research for you up to a certain point, And that can really accelerate your tech tree. So hopefully we'll see one of those in the not too distant future. Okay, we actually have enough now that we could build a recycler. We have our three tech blocks and three infra blocks. Um, it also costs 60 tools. We might need one more infra block for that. Gotta be a little bit careful about our placement here. I think I want to place this on the side with the wall node rather than on the side that is powered only by an in-floor power node. This recycler is going to cause some energy shortages, even though they did reduce the consumption of energy over time, I believe. Or I, I mean, the, not over time, but they, they reduced the amount of energy it consumes at one given time. Okay. So now we have our recycler in line. Now this is a permanent decision that we've made. This We've spent these tick blocks and these infra blocks to get this thing. Uh, and there's no going back from that now. If we dismantle this, what we're going to get is just a bunch of tech scrap, uh, infra scrap, and uh, that's it, basically. Um, so it's really, really a losing proposition for us to try to reclaim those resources. Um, one thing that we can do here um, to try to uh, get some resources is we can dismantle any system on the ship that we don't actually need to survive. Um, a key one here being the doors. Um, I'm going to dismantle the door between the bridge and the, um, the crew hallway here to give us a little bit more wiggle room. I also think in order to make the bedroom more comfortable, I'm going to move the toilet out into the hall. Uh, we've lost our trading partner here, so we're going to want to get the salvaging done and get out of here as soon as possible. Um, we also have to keep an eye on our energy and our water supplies, because we're not going to get either of those things from this derelict. It might be a good idea for us to expedite transfer, actually. Um, let's force somebody to do the toilet construction, because we don't want to wake up in the morning and not have a toilet. Um... So we got the logistics done. 
And now construction. Barney is going to do that. There we go. Um, so for the morning, we're going to expedite this and get all the scrap off of here before we leave the sector. Yeah, so the point of this difficulty, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. The idea is to force you to make tough choices and sometimes kill you. Um, but, you know, you have a good story to tell at the end. Um, and it's pretty exciting stuff. I think we're actually going to wrap up there for today. Um, I want to say thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, folks on Twitch, thanks for hanging out and supporting the stream. And um, I'll see you next time. Take care. Uh, let's upload here. Thanks, Andrew. Have a good afternoon.